Hello everyone, Kotongwane, the Nated God here. Um, we'll be looking at a problem based on relative velocity on of an object on non-parallel lines, right? Hopefully at this point, you've already grasped the concept of relative velocity, which you would have done when looking at problems based on objects on parallel lines, right? Now, regarding relative velocity for objects on non-parallel lines, right? We make use of two methods or you can use or you can make use of one of two methods right the one method is uh, let's call it analytical right also known as the method of components where we um, resolve each of the vectors of the object so the vector being the velocity we resolve it into its components and then use the use pythagoras in calculating the relative velocity right and the other method, we've dealt with it before as well. We know it as the method of parallelogram, right? So we're going to draw a parallelogram, and I'm going to show you how we use the method of parallelograms in calculating uh, velocity or relative velocity, right? So first, we're going to use the method of what? Of components, so the analytical method. Right, for both A and B, and then in the next video or the vi the video that I'll post after this one, right, based on the same problem, we're gonna look at A and B, but now using the what the parallelogram method, right. So for now, we're gonna look at using the method of components for both A and B, right. Now, as I said, this is a method of what of components. So we're gonna have to draw our vectors. On the Cartesian plane, right? We're gonna have to draw our components on the Cartesian plane, right? Right. Right. So the statement reads as follows: Car A is moving due north at seventy kilometers per hour, and car B is moving. 60 degrees west of north at 100 kilometers per hour so we have to calculate one the velocity of a relative to b and b calculate the velocity of b relative to a right now they said car a is moving north at 70 kilometers per hour right so we are going to have 70 kilometers per hour north right so this is now for the method of components right if the vector you've been given or if the velocity of the object you've been given is such that it aligns with one of the axes so for instance in this case the velocity of car a aligns with the y-axis right they say it's heading north we are going to take the velocity of a that you've been given as what as the component of a so meaning what if this is the component of a because it's on the y-axis it means the velocity you've been given will be what we'll be calling it v a y right so because the component because the velocity you've been given is such that it, it aligns with the y-axis right we're going to take this velocity of a you've been given as the component of a in the y direction right so the a he said is 70 kilometers per hour right so the velocity of car a right we're going to take it as the component of uh, velocity a in the y direction right and then they said car b is moving 60 degrees west of north now there's a variety of ways which you'll see they use um, to tell us about the direction of the object right for instance in this case they said car b is moving 60 degrees west of north right now meaning the north is the reference right so if you've been given or the easiest way to interpret such a direction right is by taking as you can see we have two directions we have west and north right it said it's 60 degrees west of north so the simplest way 
of looking at this is if you take the north right and putting it before the what the angle so meaning since you have 60 degrees west of north you take the north put it in front of the angle so you essentially you'd have north 60 degrees west right hence me saying the north really is the what the reference here so meaning velocity b right is 60 degrees north or is north 60 degrees so the reference is north and then the angle is between north and west right so from north to an angle of 60 degrees um let's see here to an angle of 60 degrees so let's say 60 degrees is right there right so north is the, re the reference this angle here right so not being the reference then you have the 60 degrees west right so th that's where we have the velocity p or the velocity of object p right now because the velocity of p is an oblique vector right with this one because it doesn't really align with what with either the y or x axis it means we have to resolve this one into its um, horizontal as well as vertical components right so as we know we are going to have right let me fix this first go right there right so as we know we're gonna have a vertical component of vb right and then we're gonna have a horizontal component of velocity b thus completing this right angle triangle right and then remember that the direction of both the components must be such that it is towards the direction of the original vector right now meaning for the velocity vector of p in the y direction for it to be going towards the same direction as um, the original vector it means it has to go what north right similarly with um, the horizontal components for it to go towards the direction of the well basically vp then it has to go west right and they said this is 100 kilometers per hour right now if this angle is 30 degrees then it means this angle is 30 degrees right so meaning as far as the vertical component of p so we're going to call it vp in the y direction what is it equal to because it's going north it means it's positive so 100 sine 30 degrees right and then the component of vp in the x direction right is going west so we're going to take it as negative 100 it's adjacent to the angle we are using so uh course 30 degrees right so we have all the components for all or for both um, objects right now let's look at a let's look at a a they say calculate the velocity of a relative to b so essentially what they're looking for is vp is v a b so velocity of a relative to b right which will be equal to what v a minus v b essentially right so we're going to apply the very same concept we applied in um relative velocity for objects in parallel planes but now with the twist of um using the method of components right so as far as method of components remember we use the conditions of equilibrium conditions of equilibrium being what the sum of vectors in the x direction 
uh, is equal to zero as well as the sum of vectors in the y direction is equal to zero right so the vector here being velocity it means this would be the sum of v in the x direction a b right so a in this case is the object b is the frame of reference right so this will be equal to what the component of v a that is in the x direction so v a x minus what the component of b that is in the x direction so v b x right so this is equal to now if you look at our vectors regarding um, object a we don't have a component of a that is in the x direction so that means you can take that as being equal to zero minus vpx vpx we know is what negative 100 cos 30 right so if you punch that in your calculators you are going to get 86 comma 603 kilometers per hour right because it's positive it means and bearing in mind that this is on the x-axis it means since it's positive it's going east right and now we look at the sum of velocities in the what in the y direction a again is still the object p is the frame of reference right so now we're going to look at the velocity of a in the y direction minus the velocity of b in the y direction right now the velocity of a in the y direction is what is 70 kilometers per hour it's going north so it's positive so we have the 70 minus the velocity of b or the component of b that is in the y direction which is 100 sine 30 so 100 sine 30 right and if you punch that in your calculators you're going to get 20 kilometers per hour again this is positive and it's on the y-axis and north is taken as positive south is taken as negative so since it's, this is positive it means it's headed north right right so now we have both the sum of velocities in the x as well as the sum of velocities in, 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 in the y direction taking into consideration that a is the object and b is the frame of reference right so to get the relative velocity the velocity of a relative to b we then use pythagoras right pythagoras or using pythagoras we're gonna find the square root of the square of each um, component so the component of velocity in the x direction right squared plus the component of velocity in the y direction squared right so this is equal to this was equal to so 70 squared plus the 20 squared right and if you punch that in your calculators now i made a mistake here um made a huge mistake here so we have the 86 comma 603 squared plus the 20 squared right so if you punch this in your calculators you're going to get 88,882 kilometers per hour right right so we have the velocity of a relative to b right using the method of components now we have to get the direction right now taking into consideration that the velocity of a b in the x direction is going east right so it means we have something that looks like this here it's going east so we have the 86 comma 603 kilometers per hour right 
and then the component of VAB going in the y direction is headed north. So essentially, this is what you have, right? So here you have the 20 kilometers per hour, right? Then you, what you do next is simply complete the parallelogram, right? Complete the parallelogram. Right, meaning what? Meaning a VAB is that one essentially. Right? Right, so this is a velocity of A relative to B. Now, as far as direction, you could either have the y axis as your reference or you can use your x axis as your reference right what i like to do is i look at the velocity which is the object right the object is object a the frame of reference was b right so since a was originally headed north i am now going to use north as my what as my reference so if that's my reference it then means i'm going to use Oh, I'm gonna place my theta right here using what north as my reference, right? Now to get the direction, we know tan theta is equal to what the side opposite over the what over the side adjacent. So the side opposite is equal to what the eighty six comma six oh three over the side adjacent, which is twenty. Right. So to get theta. We then need to calculate the arctan of 86,603 over 20, right? So theta, if you punch this in your calculators, you're going to get 76,996 degrees. This therefore means that the, the velocity of A relative to B is 88,882 kilometers per hour. Right, so remember my reference is what is north the angle is 76,996 degrees remember it's headed with east right so my velocity of a relative to b is 88,82 kilometers per hour reference being north angle is 76,996 degrees east right remember this is in that direction right so that is how i would do that right so that is a now let's look at b right let's look at b we are going to be using the very same diagram for b right Right. Now B, they want us to calculate the velocity and direction of B relative to A. Right. So essentially what they want us to do, they want us to calculate the velocity of B relative to A, which essentially is equal to what? VB minus VA. Right. So in this case, B is the object and A is the frame of reference. Right. So meaning we need to calculate the sum of velocities in the x direction for b is to a so b being the object and a being the frame of reference is equal to what velocity of b or the component of b in the x direction minus the component of v in the x direction uh, the component of v a in the x direction right so what is equal to vbx is equal to what negative 100 cos 30 minus va in the x direction we don't have v in the x direction so take that as being equal to zero right and what is this equal to 
right? Now this is equal to, now if you punch this in your calculators, minus 100 cos 30 is equal to negative, negative 86,603, which essentially is equal to what? 86,603 kilometers per hour right remember we're looking at the x direction so since it's negative it means it is going west right right now we calculate the sum of v y b is to a which is equal to what so v b in the y direction now minus vp sorry so va in the y direction right so this here will be equal to what vp is vby is equal to what 100 sine 30 so we have 100 sine 30 minus vay we have the component of va in the y direction which is 70 kilometers so you have 70 kilometers Right, you punch that in your calculators, you're going to be getting 20 kilometers twenty kilometers uh, per hour, right? Remember this will be negative as well. Right? So meaning since it's negative, essentially this is twenty kilometers per hour south right now we have both the x and y components so it means we can now calculate what the velocity of b relative to a using what pythagoras using pythagoras we have sum of v x b a squared plus the sum of v y B A squared, right? So this is equal to so the eighty six comma six o three squared plus the twenty squared, right? Now if you punch that in your calculators, you should get the eighty eight comma eighty two kilometers per hour. Right now, the one thing you should notice here is that the relative velocities, right, whether looking at A being the object and B being the frame of reference, or vice versa, right, the actual velocity always is always going to be the same, right. So, meaning the velocity of B relative to A being 88,882 kilometers per hour should be the same with um, the velocity of A relative to B which is the case, right? So your actual velocity actually is the 88,82 kilometers per hour. That is what that confirms, right? So now as far as direction of the velocity of B relative to A, right? Now, in the X direction, the component is going west and in the Y direction it is going south right so we have something that looks like this here right so it's going west so you have the 86 comma 603 kilometers per hour right and in the y direction it is headed south so you have something that looks like that and here you have the 20 kilometers per hour right and then you complete your parallelogram Right, there we go. Right, so meaning our velocity P relative to A will be in this direction. Right, 
remember with the parallelogram all our vectors must be heading away from each other right so the vector the y and or the two vectors right which completes the parallelogram where they meet right or from the point in which they meet they must um go in in a direction that is away from that point right so the point being this one right so the horizontal component if you look at in terms of direction both the components are going away from this point right and this here would be the rest of b relative to a now again as far as direction you can either use x or y as a frame of reference right now originally velocity b i'm oh, sorry velocity b is an oblique force right but it used um north as what as a reference so i'm gonna use north as my reference here as well right so using i mean using the y-axis as my reference right it means i'm gonna place theta at this point right and then solve for theta so 10 of theta is equal to what side opposite which is uh 86,603 over what the 20 kilometers per hour right and to get the theta it you have to calculate the upturn of what of 86,603 over what over 20 right right and what do we get here we get the same angle we got earlier if you think about it really which was so theta is equal to 76 comma 996 degrees right so many our v our velocity of b relative to a is equal to what 88,882 kilometers per hour right my reference was south the angle is 76,996 degrees right so the reference is south the angle is 76 76 comma the angle is 76,996 right in a direction where west right so had you used this here so had you used had you called or had you calculated that angle instead right then you would have gotten uh, 90 minus this 76 comma 996 right which is equal to what so you would have gotten the 13 comma 004 degrees instead right either way though if you use x as your reference or you use y as your reference doesn't really matter right right so this is the method of components in the next video we'll be looking at the very same problem but now using the method of parallel parallelogram right trust you find this video helpful right if you are tuning in for the first time remember to like the video as well as subscribe to the channel as I'll be posting more content on engineering science and four. Right. Cheers.